Young men in their 20s and 30s on testosterone replacement therapy, that's a trend that I'm seeing more and more, and I find it quite concerning. Now, I don't do hormone replacement therapy in my clinic, and I'm actually not opposed at all to testosterone replacement therapy in men, let's say they're in their late 40s, early 50s, and so on, because it might be very valuable. You know, as naturally uh, levels decline, replacement can be actually very healthy for people. But for young men, when you're in your 20s or your 30s, you know, if you're not making enough testosterone, you know, then we need to investigate why. I mean, you know, this is something that is not usual, right? We had maybe very few people here and there with certain disorders needing testosterone replacement therapy, but that was I mean, far in between. And I think partially what it is, when we look at the demographic of these young, young men using testosterone, you know, many of them are weightlifters. They go to the gym, they work out with weights, and they see their friends gaining muscle, and, uh, you know, then, hey, what are you taking? Oh, I'm on testosterone. So they're sort of using it as an anabolic steroid, which it, which it is, because, you know, testosterone certainly is an anabolic steroid and can certainly aid in uh, gaining more muscle with the same uh, input of workout, let's say. But when you're young, you should have sufficient levels that, you know, you don't necessarily need to jump to this. It will certainly give an advantage. But what these young people don't understand is that it can really um, mess them up in the future when it comes to their fertility. Because when you take an, a hormone, even a hormone as natural as testosterone is because you make your own, and uh, you artificially increase your levels, guess what? Your own production will slow down. Actually, it will be shut down to some extent, so you don't make it anymore. There's testicular atrophy that happens after that. Now, some of these things are reversible when you stop using testosterone. However, it depends on the duration and the quantity of testosterone used. So again, when you have maybe men in their 50s, 60s and so on, you know, that are maybe not any more interested in having more children and, you know, fertility is not a big issue, then that's a different situation. Also, they will naturally have lower levels, so they're more at need, you know, for replacement. But for young men thinking, oh, what's natural anyway, you know, I'm just going to replace, I'm going to add some more testosterone and I'm going to get a better workout, I'm going to gain more muscle. That is not a good way to think about it. And unfortunately, many of the clinics, testosterone replacement clinics, they don't uh, talk about this. They don't address these issues. You might do a blood test and if you fall kind of below the mean or at the lower, you know, part of the reference range or even slightly below that, without having any symptoms, because that's the other thing. We should never treat really unless symptoms are present, you know, symptoms like, you know, decreased libido, you know, lethargy, uh, muscle wasting, you know, that kind of thing, depression. These are things that can occur in low testosterone, um, you know, levels in men. And then, of course, replacement is indicated. But again, most of these men will not have any of those symptoms and they just notice feeling better. They feel a bit more aggressive. They feel stronger. I mean, these are things that testosterone does. The danger again here is not understanding what are the long-term consequences of replacement. And um, again, if the clinics do at least some testing fine and you fall in that low range, I mean, again, they, they want to make money. I mean, part of this is, unfortunately, our medical system has become very much a business. And um, if I can put someone, um, you know, on a medication that follows them the rest of their life, you know, that's good business. And I really disagree with this um, kind of system that we're trying to implement here. Um, but, you know, you'll see this more and more. And, you know, when you think of uh, people with obesity, you know, instead of really looking at the underlying factors and uh, changing their diet and all these kind of these things take, take time, you know, that's a few office visits right there. And then maybe people are not cooperative. Instead, what we do, we um, put them on medications to manage their early diabetes that they develop, to manage their blood pressure. Um, again, and then these are usually chronic medications because if you don't manage obesity, then your diabetes is not going to get better. Type 2 diabetes will progress as you gain body fat. So I think these are all um, factors. It's reflective of the way we practice medicine today, right? We don't really look at the underlying cause. We don't really try to prevent anything. We're just saying, look, these are the symptoms. This is what this person has, or these are the lab values, and we're treating accordingly. And I think this is a very misguided approach. And my concern is that the young men jumping on testosterone because maybe even their physician or some online source from, you know, maybe... Um, someone who does telemedicine, promise them, hey, you know what, if you feel a bit low on energy and can't make gains in the gym, maybe you have low testosterone, see if this helps. And of course, once you're on it, I mean, it is like a drug, you feel great. So then these people will continue. Again, the concern is not knowing all the facts, jumping on this. And when we look at um, fertility rates over the last 50 years, they've massively declined. You know, I did several videos about this before. We have um, much less fertility now than we had uh, in the 1950s, 60s, you know, by probably 30 to 50 percent. Sperm counts are going down. And part of that also is to blame on 
exposures to plastic products, you know, these um, endocrine blockers that we have in, in, in terms of phthalates and bis bisphenols. Also then increase in our intake of uh, soy products, soybean oil. In most restaurants you go to today, they cook with soybean oil. It's cheap and, um, you know, it doesn't taste like much because it's been deodorized in, in some factory. So you can use it easily for cooking because it doesn't mask the flavors of the other spices and other uh, uh, food flavors you have in there. So we are already at a state where we are probably um, decreasing fertility by virtue of um, the foods we eat and our exposure to environmental toxins. And then on top of that, if you start very young with testosterone replacement, you know, fertility is really at risk here. So I think it's something that for young men to consider. Look, if, you, if you're in your 20s and yeah, you have a buddy in the gym that makes more gains than you by taking something, you know, and it doesn't even have to be testosterone, other anabolic steroids work fairly similar to this. They all decrease your own production of testosterone generally. That's not a good thing. And it can cause long-term issues. And the other thing that's, um, that I find highly concerning when it comes to steroids or testosterone abuse, I mean, we're not talking prescription here right now, younger and younger uh, men, I would say boys, you know, in, you know, 14, 15, 16, are starting to experiment with this highly dangerous. It stunts their own natural development. Their puberty gets, uh, uh, you know, their development puberty gets changed by artificially increasing an androgen here, which is a really bad idea. Um, you know, it can lead to stunted growth. It can lead to uh, the brain not developing normally and certainly to fertility issues later in life. So I think we need to really evaluate. Whenever we add a hormone in any form, when you think of the axis, we have feedback loops. So if I give you a hormone, you know, something else will have to shift. Your estrogen will go up, you know, the natural production will slow down, the body regulates. And if the body does that for too long, then there can be real long-term consequences that in some cases, unfortunately, might be irreversible. So I think the best advice is for young men, before you jump on anything like this, you know, really do your research, you know, talk to a doctor. If you really are a case where for some reason you just don't make enough testosterone and you would really benefit, again, just be aware of the long-term consequences. And I think this whole idea of jumping on this and, you know, this getting prescribed like candy at this point is highly concerning to me. So always do your research and uh, take care of your health.